Size is relative. When you go from one country to another, like for example, me, if I buy clothes, it's usually 3XL or 4XL, but if I go to the States, usually maybe XL will do. Well, in cars, it's the same thing. This 5.2 meter long Jeep Grand Cherokee is just L, not triple XL, not XL, it's just L. Hey everyone, Vince here from Auto Industria, and yes, what I have for you is the Jeep Grand Cherokee L for, well, I guess, long. But this is basically the big boy of the Jeep lineup here in the Philippines right now. This vehicle, 5.2 meters long, and it is, of course, their kind of current flagship. I mean, the thing about Jeep is that a lot of the details are very much uh, carried over from one to the other. It just evolves a little bit. Like, for example, when you walk up to it, it instantly reminds you of the Grand Cherokees of old. It's a bit boxier. Uh, it's a bit more conventional with the way they design the vehicle. They don't go for fancy curves or anything like that. I mean, you still have the seven-slot uh, Jeep grille, something we've seen in a lot of their other models uh, from the Willys generations, you know, the Jeep MB, all that stuff. Uh, this one, we see it, of course, with some other details there, a little bit of chrome. Nice pair of headlamps, the chrome there. And, of course, the lower bumper with a bit more chrome. The wheels of this one, these are 20 inches, and they're actually very nice. They really accent the vehicle well. Uh, it does come with these uh, pretty chunky tires. But the key thing to remember here is if you want to change the wheels and tires on this one, you have to be careful because what you have inside is you, you do have a double wishbone style uh, system. But the way they did the knuckle is that the knuckle kind of goes, like if this is a tire, it goes over it a little bit. So you have to be careful to be able to measure that to make sure you get a perfect fit. Also, the suspension on this one, this is not an air suspension variant. This is still a standard suspension variant. So this is not the one that you can lift and all that. No, unfortunately, that's not the variant we have here. Grand Cherokee right here. You have this nice uh, shade of burgundy. We'll show you the exact color of this one in the supers below. Uh, panel black here. You got the blind spot warning on the camera. And by the way, it does have a 360 camera. So it has one camera in front, uh, one here, and one on the other side, and another one in the very back. And actually, a lot more cameras. We'll show you more later. Big grip type door handles here, which is always appreciated. There are no step boards uh, because this is a crossover, more of a crossover SUV. So even though there is quite a bit of clearance, the floor is a bit lower compared to a lot of other uh, frame-based SUVs on the market. So no need for step boards. What's interesting here though is that, see these doors? These are huge. I mean, for an SUV, this is actually a pretty long door. But what I wanna note is that we're noticing some things with the, the way they align the doors and the panels because if I look here, this one does not perfectly align. Same, actually it's even more noticeable here. So yeah, when, when you do these details, especially the chrome, you can kind of, it's kind of glaring when you see these, uh, these misalignments when it comes to the vehicle. So all they need to do really is need to adjust it. So they kind of need to pay a bit more attention when it comes to the quality control uh, at the factory. Still 20 inch wheels. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, roof rails up there and it's got a panoramic glass roof. So uh, let's get under the shade because it's really getting hot in this sun. So I can show you the cargo space and the engine bay. Where's the keys? The rear design of the Grand Cherokee L is actually pretty neat because I like what they did with the LED lights. The chrome strip is actually very neat. Uh, the lower bumper, they resisted the urge of putting uh, fake uh, tailpipes there, which is good. Actually, some of the other versions we've seen abroad, it does have a hole here with a chrome strip for the tailpipe, but it is actually functional. That is a good thing in any vehicle. Uh, in terms of emblems, very minimal. I mean, you have Jeep, you have L, you have 4x4. And then you have limited there. This is not the, say, the Summit version we've seen abroad. Now, a couple of things I want to point out. The first are, there are two cameras here in the back. First one is here. This is basically for your reverse cam. But also, there's another one here. Now, the reason for this one is when we look at the rear view mirror, this is the camera for the rear view camera system. Uh, if you don't want to be dazzled by the vehicle in the back, I'll show you later. Pop open the tailgate, do that. It is a motorized tailgate, which is a good thing. Uh, to close this tailgate, the, you don't press a button there because there's no button there. The button is actually right here, which is actually different. Now, in the cargo department, this is actually pretty respectable. It's got these tie down points here where you can uh, put like hook on a, let's say, uh, uh, elastic net to keep things down on the cargo floor. Now to fold this down, 
you pull this and it should drop down the headrest and then what it gives you well is a much larger space uh, in terms of space with the three rows up it's about 20 inches there uh, and then the width here is about uh, 40 45 but with uh, the maximum width is also 50 maximum height is 31 depending on how you want to fit stuff in there when you have the third row folded it goes up to 50 inches from here to over there now to fold down the middle row this is a three row suv after all you pull this lever here there you go and what you end up with is a space that is actually nice and fold flat it goes up to 75 inches maybe a little bit more if you want to push something up to the front row so pretty good stuff from the jeep grand cherokee l in terms of space let's check out what's under the hood come on come on come on come on come on there you go now this is where it gets a bit interesting because the jeep grand cherokee l is powered by a 3.6 liter gasoline engine with an eight-speed transmission that drives all four wheels it's got that quadra track four-wheel drive system going for it now i say interesting because for one the engine is actually a fairly developed one already it's been around for quite a while it's uh, a, the newest version of the pentastar engine 3.6 liter v6 makes 282 horsepower and uh, 344 newton meters of torque but the odd thing is the way they mounted it now this is a crossover suv meaning it's no longer a body on frame as it was in the old days but the way they mounted the, the engine is longitudinal meaning it's still going to be primarily rear wheel drive with uh, adding the front wheel drive to give it the four wheel drive capability unlike most crossovers i would actually say probably about 99 uh, i'm just gonna guess 99 percent of crossovers generally have a transverse uh, engine meaning primarily front wheel drive with some rear wheel drive but some of the nicer details here of course we can look around the engine it's fairly uncovered i mean there are covers but it's not it's not decorated or made to look uh, neat and premium like what lexus would do but also when you look at some of the details because like for example right here this uh, we've been looking at this for a while and we realized three it has a it has a kind of a map on it and then it has 313 and a star and i was thinking is not the eminem song that 313 but yes this is a map of detroit with with belle isle and all that i can see it all there now so yeah pretty neat detail jeep is all about these little details we'll see more especially on the third row so let's get inside and get started on the interior So the interior of the Jeep Grand Cherokee L is a nice place to be and it really should be given that this is more marketed as a premium SUV. So you look around, you have uh, for one, the soft touch material here, which is nice. Same with here with the contrast uh, gray or white stitching. It's got this nice trim here uh, with the screen here and then like seven buttons here. I think this is like an homage to the front grill, you know, seven slots so seven buttons there you go now the steering wheel it's perfectly round uh, and the trim that they use for the dashboard and the interior pieces they've got this ash uh, style wood here which i really do like i mean even with furniture i prefer this kind of color compared to the more brown ones that you would see in a lot of furniture shops now uh, you look at the steering wheel it's got buttons here all around some of the things we can spot right away your bluetooth telephony right there you've got your cruise control here sorry adaptive cruise control because you can set the distance of the vehicle ahead and the yeah the vehicle ahead by the buttons that they have here along with your speed right here uh, light stock on the left wiper stock on the right and then you've got actually two screens in this vehicle uh, your digital driver display it's 10 inches wide which is actually pretty nice and you can configure it this one does have power front seats and it's ventilated so you can control the ventilation from here so either you want heat or if you want uh, to cool it down we won't use heat in the philippines so this one would be most useful if you want to prank whoever's in in front with you 
you can press that button so yeah you, you know do whatever you want with that here in the middle this is actually where i think uh, they could improve a bit because they do have a lot of piano black and the piano black does look good however it doesn't look good if it gets scratched and already i can see scratches i mean the, the fingerprints are going to be normal the dust you can see a bit more with the piano black but with all the scratches that you know we're already seeing in the vehicle maybe that's something they can improve on you know with the materials that they use to make it more scratch resistant uh, down here you've got your transmission control it's prnd but it's a rotary dial for a for a premium vehicle it does seem a bit busy um, when I look at it, you do have your AC controls and all the other ventilation controls here. You can even turn off the screen right there. But there are actually quite a few buttons here, but at least it's uh, centralized. There are also a lot of buttons up here, but more on that later. Now, here on the screen, uh, you do have all the functions of the vehicle that you can control right here with some redundant controls there. So right now, this is the home view. I, I'm listening to Blink-182. Uh, the home view right there. Uh, so this is your, let me go Android Auto. This is your Android Auto system, right? So when you go there, the response is actually really good. So this is one of the things that they really want to highlight with the Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee. All the features that they have in this vehicle, I can, like if I look at the back, I can press this and fold down the rear headdress if I want. You do that, uh, it's useful when you want to look through the rear view mirror. But uh, before we get to the rear view mirror, you also have the surround camera right there which is pretty cool. You have Barney, what are you doing? Look down, down, down. Sa plaka. Sa plaka yun. No, yeah, no? There you go. Lower, 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 lower. There you go. There's our guy Barney. I call him the CCO that you would get in a fair, you know, like a fiesta kind of thing. So <laughs> uh, you have that. Then you also have the forward facing camera. So if you want to be precise, but it is a long hood. So parking it uh, forward facing into, let's say, a mall parking slot where they require you to go, uh, you know, please park facing the wall. This would be very, very useful. But one of the things that would be useful here, especially if you have kids that are rowdy, is the fam cam. Now, what the fam cam does is it gives you a, <laughs> a view of uh, each and every row. Make sure, oh, behave yourself. No, 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 don't do that. See, like that. But one of the nicer features here is, of course, this one. This is the rear view camera, which is the one... Barney! That's the one... <laughs> That's the one Barney was looking at. So the middle row. In terms of space, clearly, it's actually good for someone of my height. I'm 5'6", so in terms of headroom, plenty. In terms of knee room, plenty. Because uh, this right now is my seating position. So for me, it's, yeah, it's perfectly fine. If you're a taller individual, especially the driver, this would really... This would push uh, back quite a bit but still i think it's going to be pretty good now in terms of uh, actual feel inside i mean you sit down that's something we've noticed with the the grand cherokee is that the seats are really good in terms of comfort it's actually nice and soft and comfortable which is something that you really want in this kind of vehicle you've got buttons for controls uh, right here like for example for lock unlock the power windows if you want a bit of privacy well you can use the sun shades right here, you can bring it up and down right there. You've got your own little uh, light up here. Uh, grab handle right there with the hook, normal stuff. Then you have the center armrest, which is uh, not really that fancy, but it is a nice height and I actually do like it. And it does have these rubber bumper the bubble things, so it holds your drink uh, fairly securely here in the back. Down here, you got your AC controls uh, for this row. So right now, let's put it to maximum. I wish it was a little bit more powerful because it's not, uh, there's also one here, but it does uh, give you the consideration of, oh sorry, the comfort when having, when driving around that you're going to have, uh, you know, cool air here in the back seat. Now down there, 230 volt outlet, you've got two USB ports and two USB-C ports just like in the front. This would be a nice uh, vehicle for a long road trip and if you're wondering where the camera is, it's actually right there. The camera for the fam view is right up there. So yeah, keep that in mind. Now, what else? Well, not much. Let's try to get into the back seat. To do that, well, you go out and then there are two ways to do it. Uh, the first one is where the, the seat actually tilts upward or lifts upward to give you more tow room. The one way to fold is, of course, 
the traditional way, you do that, right? That's the normal way. But in this one, and some of the other vehicles we've seen, what they do is, if you pull this one, it will lift, see how it lifts up? It lifts up and then slides forward and it tilts out. What that gives you is far more tow room to get into the back. So let's get in there. No, I'm not gonna show you that, like me getting in there, it's, yeah, no. Most of the three row SUVs I've actually ridden in in the third row, uh, it's not a pleasant place to be, nor is it a spacious place to be. In this one, no, it's actually quite good because you sit here, it's actually nice. Like I sit straight, it's perfectly fine. I've got room here, I can have someone else next to me. I've got pockets all around. We have chargers on either side. Each of the passengers here can charge their phone. USB-C and USB-A, which is pretty good. You also have your own AC vents right here, individual, so it's perfectly fine for a long drive in terms of room I've actually got. I've got decent visibility, and surprisingly, for a third row uh, that isn't actually like raised up, well, what they did was they scalloped the ceiling a little bit to give you a bit more room. So maybe I have about you know that much more before my you know my my head starts scraping that, but still. I would have preferred that they raised up the rear a little bit, the rear roof, to be able to give you a theater seating effect. I mean, this one does have it, but it could be a bit better if had they actually raised the roof over there. But still, nice place to be. Something I do want to point out though, is some of the panels uh, aren't a perfect fit. Like this one right here covering, I think this would be a tunnel cover cover of some kind, uh, but still it's like, kind of loose, same with this side. So yeah, they could have improved on that. Nice detail that they have here though, is that they do have this uh, Jeep, Willys Jeep right here on the window, which by the way, the windows on the third row are actually fairly big, all things considered. On the right side, they do have, I think, I don't know, a Cherokee and a Grand Cherokee or a Cherokee and a Grand Wagoneer. I'm not sure which one they have on this side. I can't make out the silhouette. Still, pretty cool detail. So, driving the Grand Cherokee around, well, it's big. It makes you very aware of that when you try to maneuver into, let's say, a street that Waze took you on an adventure for. So you have to be really aware about where you're going and uh, realize that some roads, it will feel quite tricky because the vehicle is wide and the vehicle is long, but more particularly, the hood is long. So maneuvering that around, uh, depending on what street you're on, is something you need to be aware of. But the good thing about the Cherokee is that when you turn, I mean, the turning of this one is actually quite good on 90 degree corners. Surprising for such a big vehicle. That's something we don't really expect out of these uh, vehicles. But again, it is big, so just be aware of that going in. Now, the advantage of being big is, of course, the space that you get inside. You just get a lot of it. Uh, so even if you have adults in the back, no problem. As for the ride, it actually rides all right. I mean, Edsa, as you know, has a lot of concrete blocks and they're not always, they're not always curved straight. So here it's more like you jump, you go from one block and then a little bit of a drop to the other. It just you know, causes a lot of shaking on, on the vehicle. This one is actually managing it well, but that's also a measure of the weight of the vehicle. It gives, it gives that very nice ride. And of course, the suspension, you know, the typical American, the handling is not gonna be great, uh, but it's not that important. I mean, depending on how you wanna take a corner on the way up to, let's say, you know, Baguio. One point of improvement that I would want them to look at is of course with the, the way they build the vehicle, uh, the consistency with the, with the quality control, the quality checks, like with the panels and such. Uh, but also I'm hearing a noise somewhere that like it's there on the rear door somewhere. Um, I can't pinpoint it yet. I think it's a squeaking of the rubber seal and the body. So that's something to keep in mind. But really it's also th the noise. Um, there seems to be some noise uh, like from motorcycles that, that I'm also hearing, like that one. It's getting in, into the cabin a bit more than I would like and you know, given that this is being marketed as a premium vehicle that should be, you know, the noise control should be better than that. But that's just my opinion. Now, when it comes to power, when you put your foot down, 
it does respond well that makes a nice uh, nice growl when you floor it uh, but you wouldn't want to be doing that because you know fuel economy and fuel prices being what they are but it's good that it has power but mind you there's only me in the car right now and when you're dealing with uh, that kind of uh, that kind of weight uh, even without people in the car, I think the acceleration could be, you know, should be made better. And that actually also has an effect when it comes to the fuel economy of the vehicle. Because as it stands, we're getting around 5.2 kilometers per liter in our kind of traffic in Metro Manila. Which, when you compare it to the EPA mileage that they expect of it in the U.S., uh, their estimate, I think, is around 7.2 kilometers per liter, around 18 mpg. Uh, I'll check the numbers if I'm correct on that one. And on the highway, it's uh, the estimate is, I think, 25, which is around 10, 10 something uh, kilometers uh, per liter. And this one, I think, fits into the highway, the, the highway uh, fuel economy. It's about right. But on the city, yeah, with our traffic, it's really uh, going to be nowhere near that. Because right now, the traffic is just uh, horrible, especially with uh, yeah, the way things are. And when it rains, oh my God, you know, say goodbye to your fuel economy. That is something to be expected in a vehicle like this. But no matter, because if you're looking at a, Greek, a Jeep Grand Cherokee anyway, you're not going to be paying too much about the fuel economy. But if, you're, if you want to be a bit more green-minded, then you may want to look at uh, another variant of the Grand Cherokee, which isn't available here. It's the 4xe, the hybrid. Uh, yeah, we don't get it yet. Hopefully, they bring it in soon and hopefully at a good price. So is the Grand Cherokee L a vehicle I would recommend to someone looking for a full-size uh, SUV or a full-size crossover, as is the case with this one? And my answer to that one is it really depends on what you need it to do. Um, if you have a family that, you know, you have tall kids, this would actually work very well. You know, like if you have like, even if in the third row, tall people can fit in the third row, no problem. Just, you know, you may want to give them a few breaks if you're doing a road trip for several hours, uh, end on end, that kind of thing. Uh, but as, a, as an executive vehicle, I'm not too sure yet because mostly the executive is going to be riding in the back or riding in here. And uh, it doesn't have the amenities that you, would, that you would want for that kind of role. That's why the Alphard is so popular in the Philippines because as an executive transport, it's kind of hard to beat that because you have the Ottoman seats, you have the captain seats, you have you know, all that stuff, but this one you don't get that. So it's kind of hard to put it into that role when alternatives exist. The problem though with those alternatives is that they are so popular you can't get one unless you're willing to pay a reseller's premium, which you know is kind of huge right now. So it really depends on what you want to use it for. If you want to use it for off-roading, yeah, you can. You can use it. It'll be a great for a great vehicle for someone who does uh, camping or car camping, that kind of thing on the weekends. This might work, but the fuel economy, of course, something to keep in mind, especially when you're venturing out into the woods. But with most, most glamping sites uh, popping up, you know, not, not too far from Metro Manila or wherever, this shouldn't be really a problem. While I did enjoy my time driving the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, as I do with a lot of Jeeps, particularly the Wrangler, with this vehicle, there are going to be some real pros and some real cons. Now, pros, it does look great. I like the wheel arches. I like the interior. I like the overall presence of the vehicle on the road, the size, the safety, a lot of those features, and the audio system. That is actually really good in the Grand Cherokee L. But of course, there are some compromises and when it comes to fuel economy that's one you're going to be sipping a lot more fuel if you're in traffic also when it comes to the panel gaps the panel fitment the alignment the material selected for the inside particularly the very scratchy well piano black accents they have that's something to keep in mind but if you're looking for a vehicle for the whole family and if you have a you know xl family this might be a great option for you. In terms of price, they're offering this for 5.5 million or 5.5 million pesos, more or less in the Philippines. That will change depending on exchange rates and all of that. But that is where the vehicle sits. Is that going to be the right fit for you? Well, only you can answer that question. And it also means this vehicle would compete against the likes of 
let's say Land Cruiser. This is a full-size crossover, so Land Cruiser. You have Patrol, there or thereabouts. This might be a little, may seem a bit smaller in some ways, but that's really where it sits. But the advantage of this one is that, well, it's actually available. Let us know in the comments below what you think about the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. This is Vince of AutoIndustria.com. Thank you for watching.